Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns, present Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest. Blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. There's no one that can make a better cereal than Quaker Pop Rice. It's nice. And when you hear that shooting, you're darn tootin' that Quaker makes the ones shot from guns. And fellows and girls, you can't find a better treat for breakfast than delicious Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. So crisp, so tender, so tempting. Mmm, mmm. And ready to eat with milk or cream and your favorite fruit. Every morning, eat a better breakfast, enjoy a better day. Treat yourself right with a big bowl full of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Ray Morgan was a likable youth, but inclined to be lazy and at times headstrong. He lived with his widowed mother in a cabin on the edge of Selkirk. She was a seamstress and managed to make barely enough to support her and her son. One morning at breakfast, she sighed heavily as she spoke to Ray. Oh, it seems impossible to make ends meet these days, Ray. I do wish you could find something to do to help out. Oh, Mom, don't start that again. Uh, I, I've told you I tried to get a job in town, but, but there just doesn't seem to be anything for me. You're strong and healthy, Ray. I just can't believe there isn't something you could do to earn some money. Nobody wants to pay me much because I'm young. Then take whatever you're offered, son. You can't expect to start with a big salary. Mom, I want to be a prospector. If I could get enough to buy a paying claim, maybe I'd strike it rich, and we'd be on easy street. Folks don't sell good claims, son. And if anyone did have one to sell, you'd need too much ready cash to buy it. The thing to do is to go somewhere and stake a claim. Then work at it steadily in hopes that it might pay off. Oh, even that takes some cash, and... Anyway, I, I might work a new claim for months and not find anything. Well, at least you'd be trying. I just can't bear to have you wasting your time and hanging around Lottie Norton's cafe like you do. There's no harm going to cafe. Well, I figure I might hear of a good chance to get a claim while I'm there. I, I don't drink or gamble, if that's what you're thinking of. That Norton woman is rough and has rough men working for her. A cafe's no place for a boy. You forget, Mom. I'm not a youngster any longer. You're still just a boy to me, son. But you are old enough to earn your keep. Oh, Ray, you must find some way of bringing money in. I'm worn out trying to keep things going here. <laughs> All right, Mom. Stop worrying, uh -huh. I'll find some way to bring home some money. Ray, why are you taking your father's gun? Well, I was told there might be a job open at the trading post at Beaver Point. Maybe dark before I get back to town. There's been a lot of holdups on the trails around Selkirk lately. I don't like you to carry a gun. Oh, stop worrying. Most all the men in town carry guns, and I'm big enough to carry one, too. I'll be careful, Mom. Uh, goodbye, Mom. Maybe when I get back, uh, I'll be able to say I have a job. Oh, I hope so. Goodbye, son. Ray saddled his horse and rode uptown to the cafe. Oh, 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 there. Ray walked slowly toward the cafe as he thought of the promise he'd made his mother. He loved her and intended to go to Beaver Point to ask about the job. But he still had hopes that if he delayed a little longer, he might hear of something more to his liking. 
He entered the cafe and stood a moment looking around. Well, hiya, Ray. Still looking for that pot of gold you're waiting for? Yeah. Why don't you buy out the mining company, boy? Maybe the company needs an office boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut up. When I'm as old as most of you old sourdoughs, I'll, I'll be worth lots more than you are. That's telling them, Ray. Don't let them kid you. You find a job yet? No, but I'm thinking of going to Beaver Point, the trading post. Uh, I hear there's an open. Well, good luck. Thanks. But I sure wish I, I could get some cash and buy a good claim. That's what I'd rather do. Just go to the bank and tell them I sent you. That's huh? a sure way of getting through with that. <laughs> well, hello, Jake, you old windbag. I haven't set eyes on you for months. Ever since you said you were going to show us all by striking it rich out of that claim of yours. <laughs> well, call me windbag if you like. Maybe I didn't exactly strike it rich, but I got enough gold to satisfy me. So I'm pulling up stakes. Well, good for you, Jake. I'm glad to hear it. What are you going to do about your claim? There's a fella up at Beaver Point who wants to buy it. I'm heading up that way now to make a deal. Then I'll wait there for the boat to the States. Hello, old timer. Yeah? My name's Lottie Norton. I own this cafe now. Well, howdy, ma'am. Maybe you'd like to try your luck in the gaming room with some of that gold you have before you leave. Uh, no, thank you, ma'am. I don't go for gambling. <clears throat> Give me a drink, Barkey. Yep, sure. Well, if you change your mind, just come into the gaming room. Well, thank you. I'll do that. Tell us about it, Jake. Lottie went into the next room, and signaling to two men who were playing cards, she walked down into a small office at the back. Soon, the two men entered. What's up, Lottie? Yeah. Why do you want to see us? There's a sourdough in the cafe, short with a reddish beard. Seems he has plenty of gold he brought in from his claim. Enough for him to decide to go back to the States. Oh, that's interesting. Get to the point, Lottie. What's on your mind? Get a look at him before he leaves, boys. But don't go in where you'll be seen. He's going to be riding toward Beaver Point soon, and uh, that trail's kind of lonely a few miles out. Yeah, it sure is. Mm -hmm. Most anything could happen along that trail. I see, understand. And remember, you two are working for me. It wouldn't be healthy for you if you didn't come back or didn't bring back all that you get from that sourdough. There's plenty I could tell the law about both of you. Ah, don't worry, Lottie. You can count on us. Let's go, Wes. Yeah, all right. You better get a look at that sourdough before he leaves. Come on. Ray stayed a while having coffee after old Jake had left. Then he mounted and rode from town on the trail to Beaver Point. Ray had gone a few miles at a leisurely pace when he heard a couple of distant shots. Ah, that shooting came from around that bend. Get up there. Huh? Somebody lying on the trail. Is this horse standing nearby? Oh, oh boy. Oh, gosh. That sourdough Jake. Been shot in the back. Here come two men. Come here, hurry! I'm glad you're here. This man's been shot at. I was coming along and heard the shots. At... Oh, you men work at the cafe. Yeah, we do, Morgan. Now reach and be quick. Wait a minute. Why? Shut up! Wes, I'd say we caught him red-handed. No doubt he shot this man. Yeah, that's right. No, no, I didn't. Shut up! See if he has a gun, Wes. Right. <laughs> Yeah, here's his gun. Give it to me. And keep him covered while I look it over. Andy took Ray's gun and turned his back a moment. He noticed it was a thirty-eight, the same caliber gun he carried. He saw that the gun was empty. Quickly, he slipped two bullets into it. Ray exclaimed. Well, oh, you can see my gun is empty. I, I couldn't have shot him. Empty? Let's see. I... Does that look like it's empty to you, Morgan? Wait a minute. I Shut know up, that... plug you. Wes, we'll take this killer back to the constable right now. Let's go. Come on, mount your horse. But, but the man, you're not going to leave the body here like that. Sure, we'll leave it. So the constable can see how it happened. It's only two miles back to town. We'll take the sourdough's horse back with us, though. Now, let's get started. You're going to jail for murder. A short time later, Sergeant Preston and the great dog Yukon King came along the trail on a routine trip to Selkirk. And found old Jake lying on the ground. Oh, buggy. Oh, boy. Easy. Oh, shot in the back. 
the flicker of life in him. I'll attend to that wound. <laughs> Quickly, Preston gave first aid to the wounded sourdough who'd been left for dead. After the wound had been bandaged, Preston managed to lift the unconscious man to Blackie's back. Then, riding double, he started slowly toward town. Steady, boy. Get up, Blackie. As he neared town, Preston met the constable coming out the trail. Oh, Blackie, oh, boy. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. I see you found the body. This man's still alive, constable. How'd you know about this? Briefly, the constable told Preston about Handy and Wes bringing in Ray Morgan and accusing him of shooting the sourdough. Before asking any further questions, Preston started his horse toward town, with the constable riding alongside. Evidently, whoever shot this man didn't make certain he was dead. Morgan and the other two brought him in, seemed to think he was. What about the gun? They gave me Ray Morgan's gun, the one his father used to carry. Huh? There were only two empty shells in it. Both had been fired. They claim they heard two shots, and when they came around the bend, found Morgan standing near the victim. What about Ray? What does he say? He swears he didn't do it, that he heard two shots and found the victim on the trail. I see. Ray claims his gun was empty. He can't account for the fact that two bullets were in it. He says one of the men fired two shots with his gun. In other words, he claims he's being framed. I wonder. You believe Ray? I don't know, but I intend to get the facts. I suggest we let them think the victim is dead. Perhaps if he lives, he'll be able to tell us who shot him. I know Ray Morgan and his mother. I'd hate to think he's guilty of murder. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. You know, fellas and girls, now that May is almost here and everything feels so springy, I was thinking... Say, as a matter of fact, let's open the window and enjoy that balmy breeze. Ah. Good heavens, look what just flew in. It has wings, but it isn't a bird. It's a little creature. A sprightly-looking little fellow. You get it right. I'm a wood sprite. Well, you must be the fellow that goes around in the spring opening the leaf buds and spring flowers. But what are you doing here? Oh, you're interested in the breakfast cereal shot from Gun. You bet I am. I eat a big bowlful every morning. Spring, summer, fall, and winter. Say, Mr. Wood Sprite, you must go for wheat or rice shot from Gun. Nothing better. Good for you, too. Especially for a busy fella like me. You mean because Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are nourishing and furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts, vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Say, what was that idea of yours? It's a spring breakfast treat. You put Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice together in a cereal dish. They're crisp as can be because of the sealed inner lining in every package. Then separate the wheat and rice with fruit. Add milk or cream and... <laughs> Say, there's a spring breakfast dish that opens up the taste buds. Why don't you fellas and girls try it real soon? And don't forget... Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from gun. Now to continue. When Preston and the constable arrived in town with a wounded man, they took him directly to the doctor's house. Then they went to the jail where Preston questioned Ray. Ray, you say you were going toward Beaver Point when you heard the shot? Oh, that's right, Sergeant. I found the body, then those two men from the cafe came riding around the bend from the direction of town. They, huh? they accused me and took my gun. I told them it was empty. One of them pulled the trigger to make sure and, and fired two shots. I don't know how those bullets got into the gun. I didn't kill him, honest. Did you ever see the victim before? Oh, yeah, he, he came into the cafe while I was there. Said he had plenty of gold with him and was going to Beaver Point to make a deal for his claim. I see. Constable, did you, did you search the man's saddlebags? Yes, Sergeant, they were empty. I searched Ray's saddlebags, too, but didn't find anything. But you didn't search the other two men? No. Since they brought Ray in and accused him, I didn't think to search them. I didn't know the old man was carrying gold. Ray, we haven't made it known, but the old man's still alive. I hope that later he'll be able to make a statement. Well, uh... 
Well, then maybe you'll be able to clear me. I, I didn't shoot him. I swear I didn't. Don't worry, Ray. I think the facts will come to light before long. Uh, Sergeant, do you think if we question the men who work for Lottie Norton... You say those two work for Lottie? That's right. One's called Handy, the other Wes. That's interesting. Come into the office. We'll talk there. See you later, Ray. Remember, don't worry. Uh, no, sir. You really don't think Ray did it, do you? I'm not sure, but I've suspected Lottie Norton and her men of having something to do with the robberies that have happened around here. This may be our chance to get the goods on her. How will you go about getting proof? As I said before, if we question those two men... I Ray... don't want to put them on guard, Constable. I want them to think their story was believed and that Ray Morgan is charged with murder. Oh, I see. I'm going over to the doctors to see if the wounded man's regained consciousness. I'll be back later. Come along, King. <laughs> A short time later, Sergeant Preston stood beside the cot on which Jake lay. Jake had regained consciousness and told what had happened in a weak voice. I, I was riding along, went around the bend. Then I heard a shot from behind. I looked back. Another shot came from a gully off to the side. A bullet hit me. That's all I know. I see you carried gold? Yeah. Three small sacks. I reckon, reckon that's what they were after. No doubt. I think we'll get it back, Jake. Now, you rest and take it easy. I'll be back to see you again soon. The sergeant, with King running alongside, rode to the scene where the shooting had taken place. Then he turned and rode over to the gully, which Jake had mentioned. Oh, Maggie. Oh, boy. Easy. <laughs> Huh. Two horses stood here in the gully. Someone must have shot Jake, robbed him, been scared off when they heard someone coming, then circled back and got him behind Ray. Yes, that's where they rode into the gully. I'll have King backtrack the trail just to make sure. Here, fella. Find them, King. Back that way. Find them, boy. Steady, fella. Go, Blackie. Later, Sergeant Preston and King entered the constable's office to find Mrs. Morgan nervously sure talking to the officer. Didn't do it. Constable, it's terrible that he has to be in jail. Don't worry, Mrs. Morgan. I think Ray will soon be free. Oh, Sergeant, I'm so glad you're here. I warned Ray not to carry that gun. I agree with you that he's too young to carry a gun, but in this case, the fact that he had one may have saved his life and that of the victim. Ray's gun gave the others the idea of framing him. Then you found out that he really did the shooting? I'm reasonably sure of it, Constable. Oh, thank you. I have a plan that may bring all the facts to light, but I'll need your help to put it over. Sure, anything you say, Sergeant. Meantime, in Lottie's office, Handy and Wes were discussing the shooting and robbery <laughs> with her. <laughs> Imagine, Lottie. We accuse young Morgan and take him right to the Constable. You were taking a big chance, you fools. Especially while you had those three pokes of gold in your saddlebags. We didn't mention about the old man carrying gold. And since we accused Morgan and gave the constable Morgan's gun with two shots fired from it, he had no reason to suspect or search <laughs> us. Yeah. And now Ray Morgan is in jail charged with murder. After you got the gold, you should have stayed out of it entirely. What gave you the idea of going back when you saw Morgan going toward the body? We wanted to be sure the sourdough didn't talk in front of Morgan. If he happened to be conscious when we rode toward him after the shots, he could have identified us. You mean you weren't sure he was dead the first time? We didn't have time. We rode up, took the gold, then heard hoofbeats coming. So we circled around to get behind whoever was coming. Oh, he's dead all right, or we would have heard otherwise. Mm. All right. But you two be careful, you hear? Yeah, sure. Ease out into the game room and start playing cards. I doubt if anyone missed you since you left by the back way to follow the sardo. All right, now get going. Handy and Wes went into the gaming room and played cards a while. Then later, they walked into the cafe and joined a group who were discussing the attack on the sourdough, Jake. I just can't believe young Morgan do a thing like that. But he was wishing he could get some ready cash. And he did hear Jake tell about having that gold and heading for Beaver Point. Ray Morgan did it all right. Wes and I weren't in here this morning when that sourdough was shooting off his mouth, so we didn't know he was robbed till we heard folks talking. Yeah, that's right. But Handy and I caught Morgan red-handed right after the shooting. So we know he did the killing. 
Of course, we we didn't see what he did with the gold. He must have thrown it off to one side when he heard us riding toward him. If we'd known, we could have searched for it. Of course, the constable might have found it when he went to get the body. Too bad poor Jake had to go like that. Yeah, that no good young killer ought to hang. Well, I yeah. Say, I wonder just how much gold Jake had with him. He didn't mention the amount when he was in here this morning. You got me, I wouldn't know. Well, neither would I. From what he said, it must have been plenty. Yeah, that's what I figured, too. Well, well if they find the gold, it'll help clinch the case. What's all the gabbing about, Handy? Oh, we're talking about the killing, Marty. The killer's in jail, and that's all there is to it. As far as I can see, there's nothing more to say about it. Eh, too bad a nice-looking young fella like Morgan had to go loco. Just so as he wouldn't have to work for a living. Yep. He always was too lazy to work. Too bad his old man didn't live to handle him. Who are you talking about? Young Morgan, that's who. I suppose you figure you got a clear case against him, huh, Constable? Well, we're still trying to get him to tell what he did with the four pokes of gold that were taken from Jake's saddlebag. Four pokes of gold, you say? That's right. Now, hold on, Constable. I understand nobody knew how much Jake Keep had. Keep quiet, Handy. Uh, what gives you the idea he was robbed of four pokes of gold, Constable? Jake told me himself. But he's dead. How could he no, tell you? No, he that? isn't dead. Huh? Holy mackerel. Did he talk... Uh, I mean, well, did he identify Morgan as the one who shot him? No, I'm sorry to say Jake didn't see who fired at him. But he did say he lost four pokes of gold. Uh, he's probably delirious. He Keep your big think. mouth shut, Handy. The Constable isn't interested in your opinions. Ah, uh, let's forget about Morgan and that shoot in a while. I'm sick of hearing about it. Barkeep, the treat's on the house. Go to it, men. All right. Thank you. All right, boys. Handy, Wes, come into my office right away. Come on. Now, you double-crossers, where's the other poke of gold? Where is it? Now, take it easy, Lottie. There were only three pokes in the saddlebags. We brought all three right here to you. Jake lied. That's right, Lottie. That's the truth. Don't try to lie to me. You just heard the constable say there were four. Those three are right here. Now, what did you do with the fourth one? Answer me. There wasn't what? a fourth one, Lottie. Hey, look, the constable sneaked in behind us. I'll plug him. Oh, somebody shot through the window. I'll get him. Oh, that gun. No! Go through, Lottie. Sergeant Preston. Lottie reached into the open drawer for a gun. The great him. dog king saw the gesture and sprang past his master with a snarl. Help! 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 Get him away! Get him away from me! Watch him, fella. Well, Constable, there are the three pokes of gold stolen from Jake when he was shot. Our little trick worked. Handy and Wes went back and found him where Morgan threw him. Uh, I was fixing to send him to you, Constable, when you I came in. I eased the door open and heard what was said, Lottie. We both know Handy and Wes tried to kill Jake and took his gold. Well, how did I know they did it? I believed them when they told me young Morgan was She's the one... She's lying to save her own neck. That's right. She sent us after Jake. She had us pull a lot of robberies. And she always took the biggest share. Freeman Morgan was their idea. Uh, they fired two shots from Morgan's gun, then took them to the constable. We've heard enough, constable. We arrest you three crooks in the name of the Crown for robbery and attempted murder. Let's take them to the jail, constable, and bring Jake's gold with you. After Lottie, Handy, and Wes were jailed, Preston took Ray Morgan and his mother and went to see the wounded man, Jake. Preston explained the outcome of the case to Jake and told him his gold was safe. Jake, who was feeling stronger, looked at Ray and then said... Sure, they thought you shot me because you wanted cash to buy a good claim, huh, son? Yes, Jake. But now I'll be satisfied to go to work at the trading post at Beaver Point. The sergeant tells me that you being on that trail at the time might have saved my life, Ray. Seeing as how you've been through so much because of me, I, I reckon I ought to do something for you. Oh, that isn't necessary, Jake. I'm mighty glad you're alive. <laughs> yes, so am I. And I've decided to take the boat right from Selkirk as soon as I'm well. No use selling my claim... I reckon maybe you might be a good man to try your luck at working it. Well, what? Yeah. It's yours if you want it and are willing to work. There's your chance, Ray. Oh, gosh, Jake, that's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, Ray, and now you'll have a good claim to call your own. Yeah, oh. it's a mighty good claim, son. And it's all yours. Maybe I'll come back someday and then we'll work it together, huh? <laughs> but don't count on that. Once I get settled in the States, I'll most likely stay put. Oh, my gosh, Mama. I've learned my lesson. We'll move out to the claim and I'll work hard. You know, son, 
I've always secretly wanted to try my hand at working a gold claim, too. <laughs> and thanks to Jake, we both have our chance. Jake, that's a fine thing you've done. I'm sure Ray will prove his worth. Oh, now that Lottie Norton and her gunman are in jail, you have your gold back, and Ray has what he's wanted, I'm happy to say this case is closed. <laughs> Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Let's give the whole family three guesses on what this is. One, delicious, toasty, nut-like flavor. Two, the flavor of the good natural grain. Three, exploded up to eight times normal size. Sure, you've guessed it. The breakfast cereal shot from gone. Delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. With the sun-ripened natural flavor that Mother Nature puts into the grain. Never coated with factory sweetening. After all, some like their cereal not so sweet, others like it very, very sweet. And that's the beauty of Quaker puffed rice and wheat. Your whole family can sweeten them with sugar to suit their own taste. So Mom can please everybody at breakfast time when she serves crisp, delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice every morning. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Reporting for duty, Inspector. There's been a jailbreak, Sergeant. Who, sir? Sky Martin. He's heading through the hills for the border. As far as we know, he has neither money or supplies, and he'll need both. That means he'll kill to get them. Right, Sergeant. Get after him. Yes, sir. Come on, King. <laughs> Scar knew that he would be followed and knew that Sergeant Preston would more than likely be assigned to his recapture. That suited him perfectly. Even more than his freedom, he wanted to even the score with the sergeant before he left the Yukon. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon is brought to you every Tuesday and Thursday at this same time. On Thursday, by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rock. The breakfast cereals shot from guns. Boys, girls, hurry. Get this special brand new collection of 18 Braves of Indians Nations trading cards. That's 18 Indian trading cards, all different. All reproductions of original paintings of famous Indians. Set includes Arapaho War Dance, Hopi Snake Dancer, Blackfeet Buffalo Hunter, Sitting Bull Geronimo Crazy Horse, to name a few. Every card in full colors, stiff back, regular playing card size. These exciting Indian trading cards are not on sale in stores. They're offered only by Quaker Paco 10. That's Quaker Paco 10. Ten crisp, fresh individual servings of six different favorite ready to serve cereals. Remember, only Paco 10 has wheat and rice shot from guns. And inside special new packages, now at grocers, you get a sample Indian trading card free of extra cost. To get an entire collection of 18 in a hurry, do this. But act fast. Supply is limited. Right now, tonight, send name, address, and 10 cents. That's only 10 cents, together with money-back guarantee seal or special order blank from bottom of Paco 10 package. Mail to Indian Cards, Box 712. That's Box 712. Chicago 77, Illinois. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Popped Wheat and Quaker Popped Rice. So long. Listen tomorrow at this same time to the Green Hornet. Brought to you by the drink that makes you feel fresh again. Delicious Orange Crush. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>